uh, used a very interesting phrase for Rahul Gandhi after the Bharat Jodo Yatra. Uh, and you said it to me as well. You said you thought Rahul Gandhi had finally earned his inheritance. As you got to know him, there are many impressions of Rahul Gandhi in the media. Good, bad, indifferent, ugly. If you were to tell people about him today, maybe persuade your other lawyer-eyed friends, give him a chance. What would you say? What would you, with more information or with new facts as you call them, what would you say about him? No, first of all, I should uh, say that actually I had known Rahul even earlier. I had known Rahul before the Anna movement. For almost two years, I had met him at least 20 times. All which is reported in Wikipedia as he was advisor to Rahul Gandhi, right. nothing, nothing of that right. sort. But I know I sort of uh, related to him, and uh, my impression then was that he was uh, very sincere. This uh, is back then. Back then, mm. and that he was more intelligent than people thought he is. And Barkha, these are two things that I have written in that article where I say Congress must die. Yes, I and I that. say. Rahul is more sincere than any politician I've met and he's more intelligent than people think he is. But I said, what good is all this? You know, if you can't even do this. So what have I discovered now in the last one year of relating to him? Uh, sincerity, that of course is there. Nothing has changed. Uh, the good thing is that he, he cannot pretend. He cannot do theater. Uh, etc. That stuff that happens in politics. No, he's not that. He's a very straightforward person. Hanji, ho sakta hai, ye nahi ho sakta. I disagree with you. I just, which very few politicians do. Mm. So it's straightforward. Intelligence, as I've said earlier, you know, uh, he understands policy, is smart, and I don't know how this Papu image came to be pasted. You know, he says he he reads, he thinks, and so on. What I discovered in new are the following. One is that uh, I wasn't sure how much of his values have been transformed in the last 10 years. And actually, it's been a pleasant surprise for me to see that uh, on uh, three core issues that matter to me, yeah. uh, his convictions are very deep. I don't know of many politicians who have deep convictions like this. One is secularism. He thinks like a Nehruvian. He is still a very deep Nehruvian on secularism. Election hard jayenge, koi baat nahi, ye nahi karenge. On caste, not many people know. People have just started noticing it now because of what he's saying on caste census and so on. But he's almost an Ambedkarite in thinking about caste, mm -hmm. very strongly so. And on economy, you know, people now notice the Adani question. But uh, his own convictions on economic equality, I mean, he's not a Marxist. But in that broad sense, his convictions are very strongly egalitarian. So that's one thing that I've discovered, his convictions. He's a man of conviction. Second thing which I had not noticed then is that there is a spiritual streak in him. Deep, you know, so when he says shunya and so on, these are probably things you shouldn't say in press conferences. No one makes sense of what you're saying. But there's a deep spiritual streak and it's actually very... Indian spiritual streak, in many ways, very Hindu spiritual streak, mm. uh, where there is a detachment from power, detachment from things as are happening to you. You are almost watching yourself as a fly on the wall. Uh, that is amazing for someone who is in politics. Two, two, two questions there. Uh, one is I am reminded of a time when Randeep Surjewala, I think it was Surjewala, who spoke about Rahul Gandhi being a Janyudhari Brahmin. Mm -hmm. uh, there is also a cynicism that this iconography built ki jari hai. This is to try and counter the sort of muditva uh, of our times. So these are my two questions when you say that the thought is your close. I am sure that Janyudhari comment made you uncomfortable. Maybe it was a real no, politics moment. Can't, I still can't understand what that moment was yeah, about. Uh, it's, the it's Rahul really that I have to. known, uh, I mean, did someone managed to persuade, prevail upon him that morning to say, to karido boss, etc. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, we uh -huh. do all kinds of things. But that's completely out of sync with what the person I've known. Uh -huh. uh, about going to temples? No, that's not a problem at all. Because he actually, I mean, as I said, you're saying uh, that's his belief. That's his belief. Uh, uh, and he would happily go to a mosque and to a gurdwara because he's actually, in that sense, sarabdhar samabhav. 
with genuine respect. So he thinks of Shiva, he thinks of uh, our mythologies and yeah. so on. And I dare say he's probably more educated about Hinduism than most of these BJP leaders. But the pursuit of power, where you said that there's an essential kind of detachment, I'm reminded of a time when a younger Rahul Gandhi, I think it was he was going to be the vice president of the Congress party and he spoke about a conversation he had with his mother where he described power to be like poison. Now there has been a sense of Rahul Gandhi, maybe not today, but let's say till just before the Bharat Jodo Yatra, ki this is not a person committed to the pursuit of power. So, okay, you're smart, you're well-read, you have a thinking mind, you have views on policy, you have views on foreign policy, but you have to in the of success and how change Do you still believe that he is a reluctant, not a full-time politician? This is a criticism of the bar bar. You see, there's a dis- difference. I mean, it's a very interesting question. There's a difference between being power-hungry hmm and having a will to power. These are two different things. Uh, being power hungry actually makes you smaller in politics. And uh, you know you make all kinds of compromises, the usual stuff of politics to get displayed. But a complete detachment from power mm. is not a very good thing. It's actually ethically not a very good thing. Mm. You know, uh, what you need, especially if you are in public po- life, even if you are not in public life, every human being should claim certain bit of power, uh, which is That's right. yeah. for, to, to live in a dignified, don't thank you, dignified life. Uh, you know, you need that. And if you are in public life, if you are in the business of mobilizing people, driving them towards something, then you must have that will to power for that purpose, not for myself. Right. So while Rahul has sufficient detachment of the first kind, does he have sufficient drive of the second kind is something which is still to be seen. I can't claim to be that kind of a buddy who, you know, who yeah. knows him from within. Yeah. Uh, but that's something that I'm waiting to see.